بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد. Um, as we have, uh, you know, saying after the salah, and uh, this inshallah be a recording, so it's going to be distributed. Uh, so this is the flyer of the fourth annual Dawra intensive learning, uh, starting inshallah August the 17th to August the 22nd, inshallah. The books are At-Ta'iyyatu fi Ibn Taymiyyah and at taiyya poem on predestination by Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, the second book is Book of Wisdom of Ethics and Conduct by Ibn Hazm. Uh, is one of the books that it's really, um, it was, it has a great, you know, um, add, I mean, this is what we know, but, uh, you know, the Western always, when they inspire from the Muslim civilization, they always, you know, don't mention it. But this book, one of the, base of the books, you know, all the, the psychology and, and uh, the, the way of the ethics and, you know, how to fight anxiety and things. So it's really a book of cleansing the soul and so on, of Ibn Hazm al-Andalusi. Uh, uh, the like of it, but is in different way, like Ibn Ata al-Sakandarani and of Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah. And then a treatise on the uh, new atheism which is very important. We'll continue, insha'Allah ta'ala. And in the path of the striving of the believer as being a spirit, you know, in the life of the believer, when we say the striving is the jihad. And uh, the jihad is, uh, is a spirit for the believer, as we have said. So uh, by now we know how important is the jihad in the life of a believer. It is one of the uh, fundamental aspects we can say, or tools of the implementation of the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the first one is the following, the ittiba', to learn how to do, uh, to worship Allah, how to act, how to balance between diff different centers uh, into yourself and different, you know, uh, aspects related to your uh, daily life and to your planning. So that's the ittiba', which is the way of the Prophet sallallahu and the way of the Prophet ﷺ providing for us is that balance, is the balance. How much worship you need to do, how much business you need to do, uh, how much time you need to uh, you know, dedicate to your family, and that balance, that balance which is one of the greatest uh, way of the ittiba'. And then the deeper you go, the more you understand, you know, uh, those uh, specific action of the Prophet ﷺ, of course not limited to the appearance. Because most of the people, when they talk about, you know, the following of the Prophet Sallallahu it's like he's only restricted to the appearance. What to wear, how to do your hairdo, how you, you know, you take care of the beard, and so on. But that's the appearance. I mean, we want the akhlaq of the Prophet Sallallahu the way of the Prophet Sallallahu that's the soul, that's what gives us life. The appearance will be like, you know, just appeared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're talking about the, uh, the hypocrite, he described their bodies. Yeah. You like their bodies, their appearance. But their heart is ruined, corrupted. It's like, you know, a piece of, uh, you know, that wood that you use in construction. You see them like against the wall. They don't do anything. Yeah. But they have their way to really corrupt and destroy from within the, 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 the Ummah. And then al itiba'u wal mujahad. And then the jihad comes at that spirit who will be driving you toward the implementation. So we have mentioned the characteristic of the believer and the great moral that the believer need to strive to have. And then what the believer need to avoid and try to help others to not fall into it. So we mentioned last time few of them and we'll continue the rest. Some of the had mentioned, 
is from the beginning, you know, to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be muhsin. And we explained what it means to be muhsin, which is has the, that uh, drive, that eagerness to do good. And we explain it, you know, to be in a path of ihsan and obligation, but to reach and attain the level of ihsan is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the other aspect is very important that uh, the true believer, the true Muslim, who those people, people feel secure and safe from him or from her, from especially their tongue, their, you know, so, so when you think the Muslim, when people think about him or about her, they think like in a very high esteem, which is mean like this Muslim is not going to cause you harm or hurt, or talk ill about you. So here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You know, people, they, uh, you know, hold them in, in uh, you know, at high esteem, in way high esteem. Why? Because they know that he's not going to hurt them, or plan to hurt them, or going to be uh, cheating when in any transaction. Uh, or, you know, talk ill in their back. So this is, so Salima, Salima it means like, you know, feel, feel peaceful toward you. Because you, they know that you are an honest person. You're not the people who are going to be like hurting other people. So that's a mujahada for the believer to have it. Uh, we'll continue, we'll resume exactly, you know, because we already have said that. The last point that we have read, قَالَ مَنْ جَاءَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِكُلِّ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ الْقُرْآنُ الْكَرِيمُ عِلْمًا وَعَمَنًا To believe uh, in that which was mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first, by knowing it, second, by acting upon it. So you see, this is a journey of striving to implement such a thing. And I have mentioned the example of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, and his son Abdullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with them both. Uh, they, in different narrations, they memorized Al Baqarah in nine years. Not of lack of capacity to memorize it faster, but they used to take one ayah, implement it, and then go to the second, next ayah. So this is their way. It does not mean this is the uh, obligatory way to memorize that to teach us how important is the implementation of the Qur'an in your life. Because the Qur'an came to be implemented, not to be read, recited, and memorized only. Uh, the next point, One of the requirements of the believer is to turn away, in a way, on al-laghu wal batil vain talk and falsehood. If there is a gathering where there is a vain talk, things that does not benefit, things are going to turn into gossip, it's going to turn into backbite, it's going to turn into disputing and arguing about things, future does not really add you. It's like it's killing, literally it's killing the time, the time, that precious time that you have at that moment is being ripped apart. As a believer, you should not be in that gathering. You should not be in that gathering. So why? Because being around people talking about falsehood or talking about, you know, things that really uh, has the impact to uh, have your heart to grow hard. See, um, there's many of examples, you know, if you take fish out of the water, they can live for some time. But then they need to get back to the water so they can get back their life. That's the believer for the believer to be in a gathering or in a place or in whatever situation when vain talk and falsehood that all what is being, you know, talked about or done around is like that fish around the world, uh, you know, outside the water. 
قال وقد نزل عليكم أن إذا الله سبحانه في الكتاب أن إذا سمعتم آيات الله يستهزأ بها يكفر بها ويستهز بها فلا تقعدوا معهم حتى يخوضوا في حديث غير And it has been notified to you in the book And this is in Surah Al-Nisa And it has been notified where in Surah Al-An'am وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوضُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَلَا تَقْعُدْ مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ If you see people just to start to talk about things that is going to come and question your deen. So here specifically talking about the Prophet said about your path. But if it is in the core of your path, so that's by obligation is haram for you to be there. If something that is not beneficial to you, or something, for example, talking about something that for you is considered a sin, for other people is normal, it should not be there. If something that they're talking about thing, but it does not relate to you at all. Imagine after Salat al-Maghrib, you are with people, and you're just waiting for Salat al-Isha. Example, you ask yourself, my sitting with these people is going to help me to have a better meeting with Allah or it's like distracting me and this is subhanallah when you're gonna find your answer I should not be here because one of the way to be truthful into your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have that companionship who help you be closer to Allah because you ask yourself, for example, when you are in gathering when they're very in talk, you know, of course we're talking in general, because sometimes, you know, someone, and when we say very in talk, thinks really that is going to cause, uh, you know, some dark spot into your heart. Okay? Uh, there's a lot of things without, you know, getting into examples, you know. Just randomly look at uh, YouTube or look at, you know, at the list of the program that they have on the, you know, on the cables or whatever. You're going to see titles going to be like, just the titles. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, you know. Because people, subhanAllah, they live in a world, they think that this world belongs to them. You know, sometimes even you see titles of book. You said, "Subhanallah, how these people dare to write even titles like that?" And it seems very normal for other people. Okay, so this is the believer. The believer must be sensitive to this thing because if you're not sensitive, then we're causing ourselves to have full desensitization toward all these things. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Successful are the believer." قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The two first thing. One, which is the center of connection with Allah. The second is the center of your preoccupation. قَالَ أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who have full focus, خشوع, devotion into their prayer. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ And those who turn away from the vain talk. You have center connection with Allah and have your preoccupation, what you do in your life. So in your life, you know, uh, there's a friend, there's work, there's co-worker, there's colleagues, there's, you know, market, malls, things. In all of that, everything is halal, you know, what is halal, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes lawful. But in the center of that, you'll be careful to be away from the love. Look, one of the strongest du'a that the Prophet Sallallahu taught us, that's why he hear that TV, is when you enter a market. Right? When you enter a market, لا إله إلا الله وحده ولا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحي ويميد بيد الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير Wallahi, those sentences, it's like you're getting into war. <laughs> Subhanallah, it's like you're getting, you know, you, you are celebrating and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that it's like you are strengthening yourself. Why? Because you're getting inside the market. 
Of course, don't think about it, you know, it's in a rigid and hard, you know, rigid way or harsh way. No, think about it, uh, you know, in a way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala care about you. And in the same time, know how fragile you are, how fragile we are, how sensitive we are, how vulnerable we are. Because it takes, subhanAllah, one small thing for someone maybe to lose everything. I mean, there's a real story, real story. Sometimes, you know, an innocent, you know, person, um, someone, uh, he, you know, promised her things and just his, his he like, subhanAllah, opened for her the gate of all her dreams. True story, just being, to, you know, one of the shiuch, he shared with me this story. Someone who memorized, you know, getting into Quran and memorizing, suddenly, subhanAllah, everything changed. He said, this person called Wult Haram. Wult Haram, he just, you know, kind of, uh, he, he said, Allah, make like, uh, make a cousin or did a, a brainwash to her. Subhanallah. So, which is remind me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَلَوْلَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَتَبَعْتُبُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Had it not been Allah's bounty upon you, and his mercy, eh? most of you would have followed the path of the shaitan. So to be, to be in the path of Allah, it's not because you are strong. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected you. Allah protected you. And someone can be tempted, subhanAllah, in many ways. Because you might be strong in certain part, but there's some aspect, someone is weak. So the shaitan come you from that weakness, and someone will collapse, that's it. Fa, to help yourself, look, the Prophet Sallallahu when he said to the companion, who asked him to be his neighbor in paradise, he said to me, help me with your request by a lot of sujood. So help yourself by being away from the love. No, don't look at the lagu, look, the vain talk, the backbite, the gossip, the thing that people, they, they listen, you know, the, the, the wrong news, the, the thing that panic in you, scare you, uh, you know, so, someone you just sent in a text, he's, he's a caring brother, but he said, please protect yourself, and there's, a, you know, he copy and paste part of the thing, you know, five people fully vaccinated died from COVID. <laughs> and he said in, the, um, in the, uh, the article said they were white. I don't know why they add that, but. <laughs> so it's like make you to panic. He was like, even if you are vaccinated with this COVID, you're going to die. So people who are vulnerable, it really affect them. So in nice way, I said, you know, we take with the asbab, we do what, what we can do, the rest in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa, listening to the news, uh, you know, excessively, um, uh, listen to the gossip, listen to all of that, what it has as effect, it has as it said, it reduced the impact of the remembrance of Allah into your heart. So it built a layer, so when, for example, in the prayer, you read the Fatiha. The Fatiha does not, cannot resonate inside you to give you that feeling of connection. Why? Because you built, you know, of course, not with your intention. You didn't intend it, but you built the surface, a layer there that keep you kind of, you know, kind of um, distracted. So this distraction turned into negligence, turned into blackness in the heart, turned into veil, turned into blindness. So when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be away from the vain talk, it's not a command because it's uh, subhanAllah, many people they think sometimes, he said, oh, you should not do that. If you think about, he said, this is advice or the per person he's like, he's envy. 
Because many people, when they do not have that sincerity that you truly find between the believers, when they give you an advice, 70% is for them. Most of the time, you know. When you're talking about, you know, dunya we things. So, when you think of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's giving you the order. The Prophet sallallahu is all for you. There is nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He said, be away from the vain talk, not because you like it, and, uh, you know, uh, the divine, He said, oh, because you like it, I don't want you to entertain yourself. That's not, you know, and unfortunately, there's people, they think this way. Why is haram? Don't you have a trust in Allah? So Allah is very important. And protect and safeguard the oath and the pledge. If you had a commitment, if you promise something, it becomes, subhanAllah, this is, this is for the believer, subhanAllah, it's like given his word or her word is like given their life. Sometimes, someone, can you, can you, for example, co-sign with me, for example? Give you an example, that happened. Say, you have a brother who want to rent and he said, can you co-sign with me? The person is saying, you know, he feels shy and everything. He said, okay, I go sign. <laughs> but he didn't like it. He does not want to do it. Say, hold on. You are a believer. You cannot co sign in something that you cannot honor first. And you cannot co sign when you are forced. Because the most important, you take a pledge, an oath, a promise that you're going to fulfill. So you say, I'm sorry, I cannot. Not because I don't trust you, but I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I might be weak, I cannot do it. It's not nothing to have to do with you. But if someone, for example, say, say, say okay, what is going to involve? involve if this brother does not pay anything, I'm going to pay everything. Can I afford that? I think I can. Okay, I'll co-sign for you. With the intention, if nothing if it goes wrong, you're going to pay. So you'll be ready. So this is the pledge. This is the commitment. You see, this is I'm giving you an example that it might be, you know, uh, example that we have, you ha we have it in today's society. So when you make a pledge, before you make it, you think of the worst of the scenario. Will you be able to handle it, to face it. If not, do not sign. Do not make the ahad. Because the ahad can be a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blamed the munafiqeen when they said, they gave the oath to the Prophet sallallahu to protect Medina, to protect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ahzab, and if the Medina will be entered or attacked from any way, they will resist but a little. And then they're going to join the other forces, the armies, against the Prophet. So I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at what he said. He said, And indeed, they had already gave their oath to Allah. And the oath of Allah is accountable. Who's going to be, uh, you know, a question? They'll be questioning about it. ما يرضى بحكم الله وقضائه وبحكم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في كل فعله وقوله. This has come to this what we have said in how much you trust Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala telling you this is bad. Buying this is bad. You look at it, it's good. My judgment, my knowledge, my nafs, my hawa, my whims, I like it. Now, but 
I believe what Allah is telling me is better for me. That's what I believe. That's what we call it believer, right? That's what it means to be a believer. Then what is my next step? My next step is to strive against myself to say I'm not going to get you because Allah told me that you are bad. So the nafs said, bad, I want it. I said, no. So that's the jihad, you see, that's the jihad. So before go ahead and rely on Allah to do the action, I first need to trust Allah in what he's telling me. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you this is wrong. And my nafs want it. My nafs want it. And this is where it comes, the striving action. So I said, are you going to trust your nafs, yourself, or trust Allah? Who are you going to trust? Now here people, how they fail. They declare a war against Allah by disputing, arguing, say this is not true, this hadith is da'if, this hadith is rejected, this hadith this, this Qur'an, uh, you know, yeah, it was true in the time of the Prophet, it's not true. He said, what do you want? Why are you making all this, you know, just, you know, acrobacy around the ayat of the Qur'an? You want to do this? He said, yeah, but it does not make sense. He said, no, it not, does not make sense to you because your heart is blinded. Then go do it. Don't justify it by, subhanAllah, make altering the interpretation of the deen so you can do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if'alu ma Do whatever you want. If you have the answer in front of Allah, then do whatever you want. If you do not have answer and you do not fear Allah, then do whatever you want. Okay. But to, uh, subhanAllah, twist the deen to validate that wrong thing so you can do it peacefully, that is one of the greatest uh, violation of the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laws and Allah's decree. Allah's decree. Because whatever happened to you in your life is a test. So when we say a test, your journey in this life have counted in hours. Actually, it's counted in the number of the breathing you make. So the test, it is an opportunity to make those counted breathe, breathing during the test to make it valuable and gold in the sight of Allah to benefit of it in the time of the eternity. minhu and hasan. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try the believer, a good trial, a beautiful trial, a successful trial. Bala and hasan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah where? In Surah, in Surah Al-Anfal, talking about the battle of Badr. I mean, we know the battle of Badr. When you think about it, we think about the battle of Badr, the greatest battle, the battle of the criterion, the battle that gave, you know, you know, kind of uh, denoted a new era in the history, right? Those who were in the battle, they are our heroes, right? Now go back and check the details of the battle. The company, they were scared. They were facing a big, subhanAllah, big trial. Imagine you saying to your family, someone who has his family, you know, with his, like, he has children, he loves them so much. He said, uh, I'm going to go have an errand. Have an errand, get something and come back to you. 
in his going out, he find out that he's trapped in a place that it might be this place encountering thing, it might be the end of his life. What do you think this person will be thinking at this moment toward his family? He wished to see them again, a last time. So, because the hope goes like, I'm going to be saved, I'm going to be this. And then slowly that hope goes like evaporating and he will be holding on smaller and smaller thing. This is an example to have us like feel what it means to might lose everything in a blink of eye. The companion of the one Allah Ta'ala alayhim, they never intended to have a fight. But having a fight, despite it is in the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, but they wish that it will not happen. Because they didn't say their last farewell to their family. They didn't do a lot of things behind them. And this is, subhanAllah, most of the people, they die, and they have a lot of things and finished. That's the nature of life. The next point is, who are your friends? Who are your allies in your life? And that's what we said in your journey, who's going to help you in your path? And this is very important, subhanAllah, even in one's family. The one who helps you to be safe and peaceful in your path, this must be the dearest one to you. The one that they conflict or causing you, subhanAllah, hurt those people that you need to learn how to say peace with them. Peace. Why? Because there is a certain, you know, uh, I would not say certain, but there is something inside us we need to keep it intact, untouchable. We need it for the rest of the journey. If I lay it, let it to be destroyed, then subhanAllah, I'm going to lose my path. If you think of one of the greatest mercy of Allah, it is the greatest actually, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the obligation to love him the most and his prophet and striving in his sake. Because if a Muslim loves something greater than Allah, then he's going to be destroyed from the thing that he loves. It's an equation. It's an equation. Therefore, Allah, by making this structure into your heart, is protecting you. Because if your heart loves something, it becomes like the dominant in your heart. You forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You become blind to that thing. Then that strength that you have is going to keep you going. It's going to give you that power to continue your journey is gone. Then what happened? Someone will fall. You see it, for example, like the example that I shared with you. Someone, when he loves a person, for example, and that person betray them, betray them like they ignore them, they said, you know, we don't want to meet again, or things like that. SubhanAllah, that precious thing that the person gave to the other person, that was their strength, literally their life. That's from where they get that, that happiness, that glowing face, that smile, has been destroyed. So what is going to happen? They're going to fall into depression. Right? If you had always kept the love of Allah and His Messenger, the, the dominant into your heart, whatever thing happened to you, you're going to run where? To Allah. You flee to Allah. Fafirru ilallah. You always, even you're going to feel hurt and everything, but you are still strong, standing. You are still on your path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. 
The Prophet give you adaya, give you a lot of tools that you have is going to bring you back that strength and which is always there. This is subhanallah when someone take awliya. When you take awliya, it's more like than friend. Awliya is people you trust to help you in many you know aspect of your life. And you trust them to the point that you know when Allah guaranteed to you something and you trust them more like the people the trust that they have in their in their jobs they rely on the job of the source of the income more than relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything that you rely on it anything that you love more than Allah without intending it by the way because nobody said I love my job more, more than Allah but they act their action is deter defining that they are loving their job more than Allah then what's gonna happen their subhanallah crisis is gonna come from the job they love money money more than Allah the crisis is gonna come from the from the money they love their children or their you know partner more than Allah the crisis is gonna come from them and this is here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you, no believer should take the non-believer as awliya so it's not the ayah here like you say, oh, you have to be enemy to them. No, not such a thing. Look at the Prophet ﷺ here, what he did. But if you give your heart and you pour it in a place where you're going to be betrayed, and betrayed it seems like sometimes say, but this people, the person, he was honest, he didn't do anything. He said, the problem is not that person. The problem that I gave my heart and I put it in the head of that person. And that person, just in one day, like, you know, he does not want to even see you. What is going to happen? The heart is gone. And then what happens? The person is going to flank into depression. The believer also, Yam Qutu, we finish very inshallah. Yam Qutu Dilla wal Mahana, Wala Yaba illa al Izza wal Kara. It's the nature of the believer that despise humiliation and disgrace the believer will never put himself or herself in position that they're going to be humiliated or disgraced they always keep that position of honor and might then subhanallah imagine then the believer every step they do they have to calculate it because many people, they put themselves in a position when facing rude people, they truly mock them, humiliate them, and then say, you see what they did for me? Then you're gonna say, why even did you go there? So the believer, when you despise to be disgraced or you despise to be humiliated, then you have to protect yourself because the believer by nature is a person of honor and izzah, pride. And the izzah is to Allah and to his messenger and to the believers. The one who's always following the truth. And he will not deny the truth. Despite the fact that it might be against you. Say someone, for example, say, uh, no, you have done wrong, and this is the proof. So people say, no, no, that's not right, and you didn't do it, and this is wrong. So, hey, don't react, you were wrong. So the believer acknowledged that. Why? Because the believer submit to the truth. Uh, not come above the truth. The believer, true believer, the shaitan does not have a power over him. But the power over the believer, he is conscience, pure conscience. 
that is connected, that is being shaped by his faith and belief. The believer is the one who desert or be away from every prohibited thing, of course, if possible, because if they fall into prohibited thing, they run back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Malahi and the places where there is that type of entertainment that really uh, violate the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like one of the scholars, Rahimahullah ta'ala, when he, in a beautiful book, he has, uh, you know, Islam at the crossroad. He's dis- describing how people, their temples is these places, the clubs where they have like, you know, that, you know, loud music and, and drinking and getting, subhanAllah, drugs. So these people, they, this is their temples. That's why the temple of these people is always works in the night, where the shayateen are. The places of the believer is the masjid. If you come to the masjid, you know, you, f- you feel that peace. Why? Because you are in the b- best place of the, on earth and you come to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ وَيَكْرَهُ لَهُ مَا يَكْرَهُ لَهَا The same thing here, it continues, you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And you hate for him what you hate for yourself. You hate for, you hate that people will talk ill about you in your back, right? You hate it for your brother. Don't talk ill about him. Don't let anybody talk ill because you hate it for yourself. Why you accept it for your brother? That becomes hypocrisy. And do not forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَأْتِي رَبَّهُ مُجْرِمًا فَإِنَّ لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَى The one who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in wicked state, uh, he will have وَالْعِيَذُ بِلَا هَلْ fire in which he will not die and he will not live. But whoever will come to him, believer, who has done or, you know, righteous deeds, though they have the highest ranks, the garden of bliss and the below uh, which the river runs and this is the reward of those who constantly purifying themselves so tazakka is the jihad that we're talking about we'll stop here inshallah ta'ala wa jazakumullah khayran and nasallah subhanahu wa ta'ala أن ينفعنا وإياكم بما ذكرنا من الله سبحانه وتعالى to bestow upon us the gift to benefit of what we have shared and to help us implement. إن شاء الله جزاكم الله